All right, Bones, it's time. It's time for the weather. We've learned what the atmosphere is. We know what the atmosphere does. We know what where the atmosphere came from. We know the problems in the atmosphere. And now we get to start talking about the stuff that affects you on an everyday life. You got it, Bones? Let's go. All right. Um, the weather. The weather is made up of something called atmospheric variables, okay? These are the different parts of the weather that affect you everyday life. They make the weather the weather, okay? Um, these variables change every single day based on lots of different conditions, okay? Um, what time of year is it? What season is it? Uh, where we are in our orbital revolution around the sun, what the tilt of the earth is, which way the earth is tilting, um, how humid is it outside, how warm is it, how cold is it, all this different stuff. Um, these are what's known as atmospheric variables, okay? Now, we measure these atmospheric variables um, with weather stations, okay? Weather stations are like little computers, and there's hundreds of them across the entire United States, and they take all the atmospheric variables or what's going on in the atmosphere, and they put it all together on a weather map for us so we can see what the weather is going to be like from day to day, week to week, um, month to month, year to year. And we analyze this stuff in order to come up with trying to predict the weather the best we can, um, which doesn't always go so well, as you can see from the weatherman. All right. So um, now our variables, our atmospheric variables change based on what the weather is like outside. So here's what we measure. OK, these are the things that go into the weather, what causes the weather and what we measure. OK, the first thing is the temperature outside. OK, how warm or cold is it outside? That's what we're measuring. All right. Temperature is the measure of heat in the air that we see outside. If it's hot, you know, it's going to be warm. You're going to, uh, if it's cold, you're going to be cold. Um, it's, it's the measure of energy going on in the atmosphere and the air molecules at any one time. We're going to talk all about it. The second thing is the air pressure outside or the barometric pressure. Um, this is how dense the air is, how tightly compacted the air is. And that affects how much water or humidity is in the air. So air pressure has a direct effect on the humidity in the air. And we've, we've all felt humidity in the air before when we go outside and it's like kind of sticky and it's, and it's a wet kind of feel um, and your clothes get wet and you can't stop sweating and there's nothing you could do about it. That's the humidity or the amount of moisture in the air. Um, we also have wind that we measure. Okay, what direction is the wind blowing? Where is the wind coming from? Is it coming from land? Is it coming from water? And how fast the wind is blowing? That all affects what the daily temperature and the daily weather is going to be and how you need to dress and things you need to bring with you. Um, the sky cover, how cloudy is it going to be? What's the visibility going to be like? We measure all of this stuff. This stuff all makes up the weather. Um, whether it's going to precipitate, precipitation, that doesn't mean just rain. That can be rain, snow, sleet, um, fog. All of that is considered precipitation. And then something called the dew point, okay? The dew point is the temperature at which clouds form, all right? Um, you may see when, it, when there's dew out on the grass, okay, the grass is a little wet. So we're going to talk exactly about what that is. So we're going to take a look at how all of these variables, we put them all together and we come up with a um, weather prediction for the day or what the weather is going to be like on that day. We're going to take a look at the instruments that measure them, okay? And we're going to take a look at how we put them on a weather map and what all the weather map symbols mean. So by the end of this, you should be able to be like your own meteorologist, your own little weather man or weather woman um, in order to uh, help predict the weather on an everyday basis. You'll be able to watch the weather on mute by the time we're done with this unit and know exactly what's going on. So here we go. Today, we're going to talk about atmospheric temperature. What causes the temperature outside? OK, um, the temperature outside is caused by the absorption of heat from the sun and from the earth. All right. So heat, you know, sun, sunlight and ultraviolet radiation comes down from the sun and it warms up the earth. The earth is also like a campfire. There's magma and lava underneath it. OK, so heat is coming up from the earth, too. This is what causes the temperature of the air outside. Now, the temperature changes based on the following factors. Number one, what time of day is it? Okay, so you notice in the morning and the evening, it's usually cooler parts of the day, where the middle of the day, it's usually warmer. Okay, the reason for this is in the middle of the day, if you notice, if you look up, the sun is the highest in the sky, which means we're getting the most direct sunlight. In the morning, the sun is kind of low, and in the evening, the sun is kind of low on the horizon. 
So we're getting indirect sunlight. The sunlight is kind of skimming off of us. So the more direct sunlight we receive, the warmer the temperature is going to be. That's why at uh, 12 p.m. noon, the sun is at the highest point in the sky. It tends to be the warmest in the sky in the middle of the day. The time of year also affects the temperature outside. Okay, so um, as the earth is revolving around the sun, we have a 23 and a half degree tilt of the earth. All right, we live in the northern hemisphere, which means we live in the northern part of the world. So sometimes we're tilted towards the sun and sometimes we're tilted away from the sun. That helps cause whether it's gonna be summer, okay, or is it going to be winter? When we're tilted towards the sun, when the North Pole is tilted towards the sun, we get more direct sunlight. We get more sunlight. The, uh, the, the days get longer, okay? In the middle of summer, it could, be, it could be light out at nine o'clock at night. The more sunlight you get and the more direct sunlight you get, the warmer the temperature is going to be. That's why it's warmer in the, in the summer. Days are longer, getting more direct sunlight. In the winter, it could be dark out by 4, 35 o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening. We're getting less sunlight. Less sunlight means cooler temperatures, all right? In spring and fall, okay, we get kind of even amounts of sunlight. We get about 12 hours in, of, of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. So we're not pointed towards the sun, we're not pointed away, we're kind of pointed towards the side in those seasons. So the time of year affects the temperature outside. Our latitude, where we live on Earth, also has a big, uh, a, it, it causes a, a big deal of what the weather is gonna be like outside. So remember what latitude is. Latitude is how far north or south we are away from the equator on the planet. So the farther north we are, okay, or the closer to the North Pole we are, the higher in latitude we are, the cooler it's going to be because we're getting more indirect sunlight. If we live closer to the equator, if we lived in Florida instead of New York, we would get more direct sunlight more often. So it's going to be a warmer temperature more often. So the latitude of where you live on Earth has a big, uh, a big, uh, is a big reason why we get the temperatures outside that we do. And the last thing is elevation. Elevation is how high above sea level we are, all right? Um, so the farther away from the earth we are, the cooler the temperature is going to be. Remember, the earth is kind of like a campfire. The farther away you move from the campfire, the colder it's going to be. So that's why if you go mountain climbing and you're on top of a mountain, there may be snow up there. It's going to be colder. But when you're at the base of the mountain, it may be warmer because you're closer to the earth. Okay. So the time of day, okay. Uh, the time of year, the latitude where we are on earth and the elevation where we are on earth all have to do with what kind of temperature it's going to be outside. We measure temperature using a thermometer, all right? We don't just always just look at our phones and see what the temperature is anymore, okay? We use an instrument called a thermometer and there's a different couple different kinds of thermometers that we can use, which we'll get into later. There are three degrees that we, or units that we use to measure temperature in, okay? Most of the world measures their temperature in degrees Celsius, all right? Zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes or melts. 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water evaporates or uh, condenses. Uh, so, um, uh, or boils, excuse me. So uh, that's degrees Celsius. Degrees Fahrenheit is what we use here in, in the United States. Uh, we're one of the few countries that uses degrees Fahrenheit. And then we have degrees Kelvin, which is the temperature at which uh, scientists use. So zero degrees Kelvin is the temperature at which molecules stop moving. It's really, really, really cold. We've never actually gotten there. We don't really use degrees Kelvin in an everyday world kind of thing. We use degrees Kelvin only if we're talking in the scientific community. So here in our country, we mainly use degrees Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses degrees Celsius. Now, if you were to look at the temperature on a weather map, okay, weather maps are often drawn with these things called isotherms. Isotherms are lines on a weather map that connect equal locations of equal temperature or, temp or locations of equal temperature. Just like when we did topographic and contour maps, we had contour lines that went around a map that connected equal levels of elevation. 
Well, isotherms are lines on a map that connect equal temperature, all right? And the way to remember that is we measure temperature with a thermometer. And an isotherm has the word therm in there, okay, which is the first couple letters of thermometer. So isotherm, thermometer, we're measuring temperature, okay? Because thermometers measure temperature. So if you see the word isotherm, we know we're talking about temperature on a weather map. Let me show you. Here is an example of a weather map with isotherms on them, okay? So these lines, and this one's nice because it's color coordinated for you too, these lines on a weather map are called isotherms and they connect equal points of temperature. So we can see here that this line right here has a 75 on it. That means everywhere along this line has a temperature of 75 degrees, okay? This line here has a temperature of 80. That means everywhere along this line has a temperature of 80 degrees. It's kind of a darker orange color. Here, this line has a temperature of 85 degrees. That means everything along this line has a temperature of 85 degrees and so on. The darker the red, the warmer the temperature. Here's a 90 degree isotherm. It is that simple. It does not get more difficult than that. Don't make it more complicated than that, okay? If you see a number on an isotherm, that means everywhere along that line and in that shaded color is the, about the same temperature. These are known as isotherms, okay? So the temperature outside is determined by a couple factors. It mainly comes down to how warm or cold it is outside, where we are on Earth, and what the, what, where we are in our seasons as we're going around the sun, okay? We measure temperature using something called a thermometer, here in the United States, we use degrees Fahrenheit. The rest of the world uses degrees Celsius. And when we put these temperatures on, an ice, and on a weather map, they are called isotherms. The way to remember it is the word, you see the word therm in isotherm. That stands for thermometer, and thermometers measure temperature. Easy ways to remember how to connect equal temperatures across the land. Sound good, Bones? All right. It must be pretty hot. He forgot his clothes.